Hi, Scott Orland, Cinema Magazine, San Francisco, Andy Serkis. Actually, the two are married perfectly for the new movie Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Andy, once again inhabiting the skin of Caesar, what have you learned in this performance motion capture about the movement of apes? I mean, how much more adept have you become at that? Well, I mean, the, the, the thing is, uh, with Caesar, he's very different from playing a, a, a normal ape. It wasn't just about learning ape behavior. I mean, that was where, of course, you start off. But, but um, I always approach Caesar from the point of view that he was almost human in ape skin. He's very much an outsider. He's very conflicted because he was brought up with human beings and, and, and believed, as in the case of real apes, actually, when they're surrounded by human beings, they, they tend to reflect their behavior a lot more. Uh, than if they're living in the wild. They have a different rhythm, a completely different way of being. Um, so, so Caesar is, is this very, I based him on a real uh, chimpanzee called Oliver, uh, who, who was known as the Humanzi, who was believed to be this progeny of man and ape. And uh, a lot of DNA experiments were done on him because he used to spa uh, stand bipedally. He would never walk on all fours. He would always stand, walk and uh, stand, and sit down as, as if all very human-like. Um, so Caesar, I, 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 I sort of based on, on, on that character, this sense again of being a, you know, ape, of course, but his, his facial expressions, the way he uses his hands, all of, all of that, as, as the film progresses, as Dawn of the Planet of the Apes progresses, he becomes much, much more human. And it's too, I mean, unlike the first film, this one, the apes are much more proactive, they're much more physical. Yeah. You guys were through trees and running up and down buildings and the Golden Gate Bridge. Can you, t since that actually didn't happen, this is movie magic. <laughs> what were some of the logistics though? I mean, how challenging was it physically for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it was extraordinarily tiring. It was very physical. We were filming um, also in, in winter in Vancouver, in, in the rainforest, it was very, very cold. And, uh, and then in New Orleans in 100% in, uh, humidity, which was equally exhausting. People were passing out all over the place. Um, and and it, is a, it is a very physically tiring uh, a, 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 a task. All of the actors playing apes, uh, when you're quadrupeding on, on, with arm extensions and going over rough surfaces, logs and climbing up things, you know, there, there's a little, you know, there's danger involved for sure. Have you become more animal aware? I mean, I mean, Gollum is not an animal, obviously, but playing King Kong, going through this filmography that you have, are you more sensitive? Are you more keenly, keenly observant about animals? Um, Yes, I think so. I mean, you just become you become aware of it. I mean, I you know I'm very interested at the moment. You know, in London there there are there's a big sort of fox epidemic where where foxes are just taking over. At night time they come, they open your, uh, your your garbage cans and and you just sense that there, there's a there's a, ri a rise of the fox population and it's very very interesting. Um, you know, we, we, we somehow assume that things aren't going to change, that we're just going to, the, the status quo is that we're going to rule the earth, but who knows? It could be foxes. Well, I look for your next movie, Rise of the Foxes. <laughs> Andy, as always, such a pleasure, brilliant performance. Thanks, Scott Orland. Until next time.